Hey, I'm JMC. Happy Easter. In this uh, crazy time, we can rest assured that Jesus is, Jesus is in control of every situation, including our current one. He is risen indeed. Over the past few weeks, I've found that what I miss most about coming to Mount Joy Mennonite is the community. I mean, I appreciate what the pastors do on a weekly basis. I appreciate what the worship team does, and I appreciate what the volunteers do to pull off a Sunday morning. But I find that the community is really where my heart lies in those uh, face-to-face check-ins of how are you doing, how are things going, the laughs that we share with our church family. When I was asked about putting together one of these devotional videos, I was asked about to talk about what I've been learning through our new normal of safe at home and social distancing, and what has God been teaching me through my daily scripture meditations. Um, And when I had the conversation with Pastor Carl about doing this, I was only a few days removed from reading something that um, is still, even now, captivating me and uh, still has me thinking about what exactly I read. And it's about Holy Monday, you know, the Monday of Holy Week. Through Lent, I uh, read a daily reader titled The Unvarnished Jesus, A Lenten Journey. And it's by Pastor Brian Zahn. And if you're unfamiliar with him, he pastors the Word of Life Church located in St. Joseph, Missouri. And um, if you're looking for some new reading during this crazy time, I certainly recommend him as an author. He's written uh, a couple different books and I think you'd really enjoy them. But anyway, um, the Monday of Holy Week is believed to be when Jesus cleared the temple, uh, cleared cleared the temple of merchants, cleared the temple of money changers, cleared the temple of the animals that were being sold for sacrifice. Um, But there was something that happened prior to Jesus and the disciples arriving at the temple that always puzzled me. And I never heard a great explanation as to why it happened, Uh, although it is certainly possible that I had heard a great explanation as to why it happened. I just wasn't paying attention or wasn't listening at the time. So if you're familiar with the gospel account, then you know that I'm referring to the cursing of the fig tree. Now, what I always found fascinating is that um, as Mark records it in his gospel, it makes Jesus seem hangry. That's right. I said it. I called Jesus hangry. Uh, It seemed that he was throwing a little bit of a fit because of how hangry he was. Uh, And a little sidebar here, and and this isn't Brian Zahn, this is more me. I always find it fascinating discovering little pieces of scripture that really detail Jesus' human side. Um, We've all been in that spot where our frustration level has hit its limit, and the smallest thing will send us into a mini fit. I mean, let's be honest. Snickers created a multi-million dollar ad campaign around this very premise. And I can totally picture Andrew offering Jesus a Snickers bar because he wasn't acting like himself. But I digress. So Mark records the scene in his gospel in chapter 11, starting in verse 12. Now, what's puzzled me was that Jesus would have known that it wasn't the time of year for figs. I mean, Mark writes about it. All the disciples knew it. Um, And I find that fascinating. But what I've learned through reading what Brian Zahn has to say about it is that Jesus was using this moment to set up the next. Because when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, he went to the temple and he just wanted to look around. He wanted to survey the scene, see what was going on. Um, He didn't speak. He didn't act. But on Monday, all of that would change. And Brian Zahn in his book writes the following. Jesus made a whip and drove out the sheep for the sacrifices, overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of the pigeon sellers, and shouted, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it into a den of robbers. Jesus is the climax of the Hebrew prophetic tradition. What is traditionally called the cleansing of the temple 
was not a cleansing at all, but a prophetic denunciation and a symbolic destruction of the temple. Six centuries earlier, the prophet Jeremiah had announced the temple as a den of robbers, meaning that the people of Jerusalem were using the temple as a hideout, believing that it gave them exemption from divine judgment for their idolatry and injustice. Jeremiah then predicted that the temple would be destroyed by fire that will burn and not be quenched. This prophecy came to pass about 20 years later in 587 BC when Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed by the Babylonians. On Holy Monday, Jesus reenacted Jeremiah's prophetic protest, a symbolic act that the priests, scribes, and Levites would have easily interpreted. Just as Jeremiah had predicted the destruction of the first temple, now Jesus is predicting the destruction of the second temple. Like the fig tree, the temple was barren of the fruit that God sought, and it would never produce it again. So based on this, I think we can excuse Jesus for his hangry fit. But it also points to another example of Jesus' human qualities. I mean, he clearly had other things on his mind and was a little stressed when he was denied his fig. I also think we have all been there, where irrational decisions abound because of the overwhelming stress that we're facing at the time. But this whole episode got me thinking, how are we currently bearing fruit? We all know that the church, small c, is a building. And the church, big C, is made up of God's people. But with that being said, the church building gives us a physical representation of a place where we can either bear fruit by taking care of others, or we can go to be fed so that we can in turn feed others, whether they're in our home, whether in our neighborhoods, whether in our workplaces, etc. So as most of us are stuck inside with limited social interaction, except for the use of technology, how are we bearing fruit? During the week leading up to Easter, <clears throat> a coworker of mine came up with an uh, incredibly creative idea. In Lidditz on the Saturday before Easter, every year, there is this huge Easter egg hunt that thousands of children, um, they come to and, and enjoy. And it's put on by the Lidditz Lions Club. Well, this year, for obvious reasons, that couldn't take place. So a co-worker of mine came up with the idea of creating 12 wooden eggs. Um, all of them have Lidditz Police stickers on them, and he put them around the borough in different locations. The idea being that if a child came across the egg, their parent or guardian would be able to take a picture of them with the egg and then uh, send it to us via our social media, uh, private messaging. And that way, uh, with that, would, they would send their address. And on Sunday morning, on Easter, we would be able to deliver them a package. So that's what happened this week. And it was amazing. And there was uh, like 470 some kids, I think, that participated. And on Easter Sunday, uh, rather than, you know, getting up and having a big breakfast with my family or, or watching the kids, you know, rummage through the house looking for their hidden Easter baskets. Uh, my family and I decided to go to Lidditz and help pass out the, the packages to 470 kids. And uh, it was incredibly rewarding um, and it was amazing. Now, I tell that story because I, I recognize that I'm blessed to be able to still go to work and still leave the house every day. And I also understand that there is a certain level of service that comes with my job as a police officer. But this was a way that I could take some, uh, some time, you know, out of my free time and, and bless the community that I work in, at least help in that effort. So where do you see yourself bearing fruit, church? I mean, I recognize that it's easy to get out of routine or lose a little bit of discipline when our normal has been changed. Um, at the same time, I believe a change in our normal is a perfect time to ground ourselves and in that create a little bit of discipline or routine. So how can we bear fruit in this time of self-isolation and social distancing? First, I would say that regular conversations with God have never been more important. 
Secondly, I would urge you to consider continuing financial support to any organizations that you uh, currently support. Um, for instance, locally, I know that the Food Bank in Mount Joy and Rainbow's End are increasing their mission to serve more people than they typically do. Um, finally, I would say that even in time when we're encouraged not to gather socially, I'm sure there's a way that we can bless our neighborhoods that we live in. It may take some creativity, but as we know, God can accomplish anything. And I think back to the Easter service and Pastor Jeremy and his wife Sarah performing on their front lawn. And I imagine that was a great treat to their neighborhood. I'm sure there were neighbors coming out wondering what was going on. Um, now, I'm not suggesting everybody plan a concert, but I think there's probably ways that uh, we can bless those around us by still abiding by the social distancing standards set in place to limit the spread of this virus. So blessing on you all, MJM Sears. Uh, may your relationship with God strengthen and grow during this time of interrupted normals. And I pray that you continue your celebration of Easter and be thankful that Jesus has beaten death in order to save us all.